Hello, good morning. Buenos días. Well, I hope that you're doing well and you had a safe trip to come here to KubeCon. So, welcome to Valencia. My name is Eduardo Silva, and one of the maintainers of the Fluent ecosystem, uh, I created the project Fluentbit, now maintaining more, more companies, more people around. And, well, thanks for joining this uh, FluentCon. This is a really small co-located session that we found that has get a lot of value uh, along the years. If I'm not wrong, this is our th third time doing this event. And we are really uh, anxious to know more also about your journey. It's not just about uh, maintainers and developers sharing knowledge, but also it's important to us to have this interaction with you after each session to get receive some feedback and understand what are the challenges that you have in observability, right? So just take that in cone that everybody who's here is really open for networking, understand uh, what is your journey in observability and how we can help in different angles. So we call that the Fluent Ecosystem. It's like the Swiss knife for observability. And one of the main uh, differentiators along the years, thinking about that Fluent D as a project, it started like more than 10 years ago, is like we never intend uh, as a project to be a drop-in replacement. We always intended to be something that you can plug in your architecture and solve your problems when it's about to move data from one point to the other. And now when we think that, um, that mentality, we think that the Fluent is more than a tool, it's more than Fluent D, it's more than Fluent Bed, it's a concept that allows you to integrate with different systems, different architectures, but also other projects around. Pretty much a part of the history is like, from the beginning, we aim to e even connect with competitors' projects. Now, uh, talking more about from the ecosystem, we try to connect with everything that is around, because the problem is not just uh, moving logs from one place to the other. There's traces, there's metrics, but also you don't want to remove your, your infrastructure agents, right? Moving infrastructure agents, uh, for example, anyone that you can have might take you a, like a year. We have a users and customers who deploy this in a scale of 100,000 servers, right? So in, when it's about to switch technology, it's really expensive because it takes a lot of time, a lot of planning, maintenance, and so on. So for us, Fluent is a full ecosystem that allows you to get into this journey on how to connect the dots between different uh, source of information, different destination, and no matter what is the data, we try to be data agnostic. Today is logs, metrics, and traces. Maybe tomorrow another kind of uh, critical information might exist, and you will be sure that we will support that. One of the values is like we think that everything in observability must be open source, right? And not just because I say this uh, because we are an open source conference. I say this because of the value of contribution across different vendors, companies, and individuals of this. But also it's really important that you don't get into this common vendor lock-in. Because when you go into observability, even if you think from the management perspective, you think that what you need to get is, well, what you need to accomplish is data analysis. You need to centralize your, all your information in a central point. You can call it Elastic, you can call it Splunk, you can call it Prometheus. That's not a, what is relevant for us. Our value is to be able to provide you the tool that you can choose your own backend or backends or cloud services in a smooth way, right? And as I said, we try to be agnostic in all ways possible in terms of project, products, and platforms. Now, where is Fluent right now? Uh, we found that when the cloud providers, you know, budge for a technology, every other company, mid-size or small size, follows that path. And nowadays, Amazon, Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure, plus another hundred of companies are using the Fluent technology in their own infrastructure. So I would say that this has been production grade for a long, long time. Now, thinking about the ecosystem is always to, year over year, start thinking 
okay, where are our roots, where we are now, and where we want to go. And there are many areas to, to think about that. For example, when FluentD was created, the problem was, at that time was how do I move my login information to a cloud service, right? And of course, the technology that was created to solve that problem was FluentD. And actually, part of the story is like, a, you know, many people complain that FluentD is written in Ruby language, with some components in C. Uh, one of the fun parts is that the POC was meant to build in Ruby, but the real solution was aimed to be built in C++. I'm talking 10 years ago, right? And it worked out pretty well. And so this POC just stayed in Ruby and started evolving, evolving, and nowadays it's still used uh, widely. Short after FluentD, when we got FluentD in production already in thousands of servers, we decided what we needed to have a kind of solution that was more uh, lightweight, more performant, with low memory footprint. At that time, it was embedded Linux, right? That was the target. And then at the time that FluentD was around, Kubernetes was around, right? But also it started to explode all this uh, technology of containers. Right? I'm talking about Docker at that time. And Fluembed for somehow got like a better fit for this new area of microservices and containers. Why? Because it was written in C, it was optimized to consume low CPU, low memory, but have a very high throughput when it's about to move data from one place to the other. So naturally, users starting migrating from one project to the other. In the initial intent, was, the idea was to have Fluentbit like a, something natural for FluentD users, where Fluentbit could work like as a forwarder. Forwarder in our context is something that just takes data and forward it out, and have FluentD as a navigator that just receives all the data and take care of all the, all the processing. But our users starting asking for more features in Fluentbit. Like, we didn't have filtering at the beginning, right? We didn't support Kubernetes. Even we didn't support tailing files. One of the first plugins available, at least in Fluentbit, were to gather kernel log messages, CPU metrics, memory metrics. Those plugins are still there. And this is really, really fun, because the trend now is that most of users are switching from Fluentd to Fluentbit because they're following a journey where now they're moving to Kubernetes or they're moving to a different kind of architecture. And when it's about to move data, eh, we got a problem, right? Five years ago, I don't know, people were processing a few terabytes maybe per month. Sometimes now it's uh, terabytes per day, right? So every year, every company, every architecture is moving more data. Well, actually, it's generating more data, right? So if you're generating more data, you need to be able that your agent or the tools that you have in your infrastructure be able to move this data in a scalable way, right? And that's why FluentD is starting to struggle on this new era of containers because it was not designed for this kind of workloads. But Fluentbit was designed for that. And that's why we are seeing this pattern of uh, FluentD users moving more to Fluentbit. Uh, now, talking as a maintainer and as a founder of a uh, co-founder of a company, we are investing in both projects. Fluentd might be around for another 10 years. Fluentbit, maybe more. But all the innovation and the trend is happening more in the Fluentbit side. And one of the things about Fluentbit is that production grade system is very high performant and consume very low resources. Of course, it's not the same to process 1,000 messages per second that 10 or 20,000. Of course, we're going to need more computing resources for that, right? But our challenge eh, as maintainers and developers is that every year we need to optimize more, more, we need to find, okay, how to reduce memory allocation, what kind of trading strategy we can use, how we can optimize in data serialization before moving the data even how we optimize when it's about to encode the data into JSON, which is a really expensive task. And as you might guess, every destination waits for a JSON payload. 
So no matters if in the agent we have a binary representation of the data, right? We need to convert that back to JSON. And now, a, which is interesting, same as the pattern that happened with Linux, same as the pattern that happens with Kubernetes, we started to get a distributions of Fluembed. The first distribution, well, of course, is the upstream distribution where we publish packages, container images, and then what followed after that was AWS, when they said, Amazon told to talk to us, and well, AWS are maintainers of the project too, and they said, hey, we have our own specific backend services, and we want to provide, you know, a first class connectors for our users by using Fluembed. Right? So we started this synergy or working together, and they created their own um, plugins initially in Go, now in C, and they say we need to package this for our customers, so they are using AWS for Fluembed. AWS for Fluembed is just a Fluembed distribution that contains um, extra Amazon uh, connectors. Now you might ask why AWS for using the forward and not AWS Fluembed. It's uh, just a foundation policy until we got some conformance committed, but, but we aim to change that shortly. Um, Caliptia, the company that I'm representing, uh, also we are launching our own uh, Fluent Bit version, but the, this is not its upstream version, but kind of LTS. We got many customers that said, uh, okay, I want to run Fluent Bit, but Fluent Bit upstream is released every two weeks, right? And sometimes they're breaking changes. We try to improve in testing and stuff, but sometimes things happen. So Calito for Fluentbit is an LTS version that will last for 12 to 18 months, and you can run safely on most of environments. And also we have Google, who's investing heavily also in Fluentbit, where they are creating their own agent, which is kind of a wrapper that a Google Ops agent use open telemetry for traces and use Fluentbit for all the login management. So if you're running Google Cloud, likely a Google Ops agent will be available for you. If you deploy, for example, a Kubernetes cluster in Google Cloud, you will get Fluembed as, as a default pod running, so as a, sorry, as a default daemon sender to collect all the logs and ship all these to stack driver. So cloud providers in, in this aspect from a project and community base is really important because you see that a technology is, has been growing and everybody now is contributing back to have a more general value. And Fluentbit um, aims to connect the dots between all the sources available, all the destinations. So this is not new. Actually, this is uh, the first button that we envisioned when Fluentd was created. As part of the community, we are seeing a huge traction on how many Docker Hub pools we're getting every year. If you compare from 2019 when we started publishing, this is just containers, public containers, we started with just a, f a few hundred, right? Now, oh, this is the order of millions. Sorry, but I just forget the unit, right? So on 2021, last year, we hit 600 million deployments. And this year, and if you think we're just in May, we're just approaching that value. Actually, CNCF just reported that Fluentbit was deployed more than a billion times, right? And that is insane. It's insane because it's a huge adoption, right? And now with more adoption, you get more bug reports, more enhancement requests, and this is uh, like a snowball that continue growing. And it's really interesting because there are more challenges. You might think that an agent that solves a, a data problem will be done, but actually, every year, at, at least in, the, in the, this cloud environment, eh, it's more heavily. Every year, more challenges, more stuff that we need to do or innovate into this space. As part of investments eh, from maintainers and other companies, we have been working on how to make the Fluentbit project eh, stronger, right? How to avoid regressions, how to in, increase our coverage of issues, so we incremented all our CI-CD pipeline on GitHub, so every pull request, everything that has been merged, go to a very strict sanitization process and making sure that there's no problem and also it's no problem running in different architectures, right? We aim to support the four basic architectures, x86 in two flavors, same as ARM, and also making sure that there are no regressions. 
as a part of security, it's like, okay, Fluent Bit is written in C. And there's always this, uh, this fear, okay, what about memory safety? What about crashes, sec faults? So from a language perspective, there's not much that we can do besides best practices, right? We try to enforce the best practices, uh, run memory sanitization, and making sure that there are no leaks around. But also, we're starting working uh, with a security company that we have a presentation about that in a few minutes, and that integrated all the Google open source fast mechanisms in Fluent Bit. What this means, fasting is a security mechanism where you take any component of the project that receives an input, right? And it tries to put a similar input or a random input or a modified input that aims to make the project to crash. It just sends trash data. And what is the interesting thing? In the first day that we ran this, we found many bugs. Many, 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 many. And uh, in the last 12 months, all of that has been fixed. There are not relevant bugs that you might face in a daily, in a daily basis. But if your service is being attacked, you might face this kind of problems. But Google OS Faster, the good thing is that it runs 24 by 7. So every, what we are doing is that increasing the coverage of the fasters for every interface in Fluent Bit. And the result is that you have a more stable agent, a more stable product. And also, as a project perspective, you might know that Fluent D was created for logs. Fluent Bit, the same thing. But as of last year, we started extending the scope of the project. And now we support metrics. And this year, we are releasing traces support. So, and this leads us to the next topic, logs, metrics, and traces. And you now might be thinking about Prometheus, open telemetry, and this is really interesting. It's like for the logging, I think that we don't need to elaborate too much. We support unstructured, structured uh, messages. We do all of this in a schema-less fashion, and we do all the processing, filtering, enrichment of data. And one of the good things is that we allow Influentbit to bring your business logic into the data pipeline. So even if you want to do some scripting and says if this uh, record contains certain key with certain value, you can take some decision of that, modify the content, or also making sure that data that uh, matches certain criteria can be sent to a different destination. And this is usually common for security and alerting. Now, the metrics journey is really interesting because most of uh, I don't know which, I think it was KubeCon uh, Europe some years ago. And they told us, hey, I'm using, well, it was an example at that moment, I'm using a Prometheus Node Exporter, I'm using Fluent Bit. Node Exporter for metrics, Fluent Bit for logs. Can you replicate the same functionality in same Fluent Bit? And it was not just one person. Many, many people were asking about that. So we say, okay, now maybe we can do tr metrics, right? Actually, Fluent Bit does metrics from the beginning, but as logs. But we never formalized it that. So we started extending our, our own core engine to support native metrics payloads, right? But following our philosophy on being vendor agnostic and be able to connect on the different platforms and ecosystems. And now it's compatible with open metrics, right? Which is a Prometheus standard and open telemetry metrics. Now, from a plugin perspective, what we did was, uh, you know, our pipeline has inputs we, or sources that are plugins that can read data from some place or receive it, and we have uh, outputs, right? How do we connect to a destination? In the input side, we implemented now a Prometheus scraper. So Fluent Bit can scrape your Prometheus endpoints. If your application is running, exposing some metrics, we just can connect Fluent Bit, scrape those metrics, and get, it, get them into the pipeline. Also, we have another plugin, which is the Mimic of Node Exporter from Prometheus, that runs locally and scrapes the same metrics that Node Exporter does. We support a coverage around 60% of what the real Node Exporter does, but I think that that covers 80, 85% of majority of use cases. That's when we get the data into the pipeline. Now, in the output side, you can expose this data with Prometheus Exporter plugin that we have or remote write. Most of the uh, services that are supporting Prometheus remote write, like well, New Relic, Google, you, you can connect to them by using these connectors. So you can put Fluent Bit in the middle of something. 
no matter what you have slugs metrics, you can use it to get this data and ship this data to your um, most famous destination. And the same is happening with open telemetry. The way that the Fluent project sees open telemetry, we see it like it's where the industry want to get a standard. For example, from if you go to any environment, the, the industry standard for metrics, everybody will say Prometheus, right? Everybody uses Prometheus. That is perfect. Open telemetry, if you ask, for example, what is the industry standard for traces, everybody will say now it's open telemetry. But as you can see, the standards always are switching or evolving, right? But at some point, you are overlapping features, you are overlapping protocols. And you need something that runs in the middle that allows you to connect the dots, right? And that is Fluent Bed. And in the open telemetry side, we are just starting our experimental uh, open telemetry input and open telemetry output uh, plugins that now, for now, support just metrics payload and we are extending to traces in a few weeks. But we don't aim to replicate, for example, the open telemetry collector. We don't aim to implement, for example, traces processing. I think that that is open telemetry job, right? Or vendor's job. Our job is to be able to move the data. But in the metrics space, we are also we're going, we are going to allow to do some kind of metrics processing. And yeah, this will be launched in Q4 2022. Another stuff that is really important is investment in performance. As I said at the beginning of the presentation, you know, you and your environments are always getting more data, more data, more data, and we need to be able to handle that load. So uh, we have another presentation from Amazon where they contributed a new mechanism for uh, the event loop that we have. Now you can have priority queues and all the events run smoothly, there, there's no event loss, the, the agent does not get stuck, because the way that it's being tested for Embed now is not the way that it was tested some uh, time ago. And we did a lot of optimizations on threading, input support, and in core on how do we manage um, memory and all that stuff. From a developer experience, okay, those are the users, now developers, is. How do I extend this agent? How do I put my business logic? How do we implement, a, for example, I'm a company and I want to provide a new way that, and take advantage of Fluent Bit users so they can connect to my services. So we, from some time ago, we support Golang in the output side of Fluent Bit, but one of the missing pieces was the input side. And now we are launching shortly this year Golang input plugins. So you might have your own fan service and you want to expose some logs and you want that Fluent Bit pick up those logs or that information, you can write your own Golang plugin for that and make it uh, available. So with that, we, we conclude the presentation. So the invitation is like, be open for observability, always be fluent like water, as uh, Master Bruce Lee <laughs> used to say. So, yeah, thanks for attending, and if you have any questions, I think that we have one or two minutes for that. Thank you. Any questions? Don't be shy, first say. You can make the question in Spanish if you feel more comfortable. We just have like one minute, so you can make the, you can talk in private if you want, if you prefer. I think we have next speaker coming up. Okay, thank you.